All right, let's have a look at how I've achieved this sort of AI segmentation effect. So what we've got here is the real original background, and then I have placed a graphical element between it uh, and the person in the photo, which in this case is me. So we've got a real concrete background here, which is this one right here. And then we have inserted this get real graphical element, then I've placed myself back on top of that. Now to do this, you need to be running the latest version of DSLR Remote Pro, which is 3.20.1 and using remove.bg in this case. Now in the iPad app, you can do it with the built-in background removal, but for Windows, which I'm showing here today, you need to do it with remove.bg. So let's jump in and take a look at how we do it. All right, so I'm gonna go jump across into DSL Remote Pro. So there's a couple things here that we wanna check first. Now in the latest version of DSL Remote Pro, um, instead of doing your image editor set up here for uh, remove background.exe, that can now be done within the profile. So basically make sure you've got this disabled. Um, so I should, this is assuming that you've already run through your remove.bg setup as normal, and I won't cover that off in detail in this video, but what you can do is take the path here and you can copy that, and then you can come into your advanced settings, or uh, which is over here, uh, output settings and there's a new section here called post process photos so you want that enabled and then we are now using the local command and we can paste in the path to the remove background.exe uh, there. Now this means that you can have different uh, remove.bg settings essentially for different profiles uh, which is a lot easier than having to use auto hotkey which is sort of the old way to do it. Uh, so for that we would obviously have local command ticked and then that. Now if you're doing AI stuff which we'll cover off very shortly in, in some more videos you would um, tick the web-based um, option there but uh, for this one it's local command and you'll set your time out to probably 60 seconds so this is going to give it about 60 seconds to ensure that uh, remove.bg returns the image okay now if you're just taking one photo you probably also can set your delay before printing uh, to six uh, to zero seconds as well previously it would have set that to 60 seconds but that's sort of now been done within these settings here so once you've got those options all set and assuming that you've got uh, remove.bg all set up and running as normal, then the next step is to go into the layout. Now here's what we've got going on. There's three layers to this. Now I'm just gonna quickly delete all my layers here and we can start again. All right, so we've got a blank print layout. So what we wanna do is first of all, add in photo number one, which is gonna be the original background. So I'll right click that and say edit photo position and we want to set that to be the full uh, width of the canvas. So I'll make that 1844 by 1240. And we're going to tick the option use original unprocessed image. So that's not going to be using the remove.bg version. That's going to be the straight out of camera image, which is how we get this background back into the, into the photo. Now on top of that, we're going to import a logo, and I've got that, which is, a logo is really just another word for, for a graphical element, so we're going to import this graphical element that I made, and we'll just okay that, and we've got that here, so it says get real, and then basically we can size that up however we like, so we'll go for something like that, and then on top of that, we want to bring in uh, the image one more time, but this time we are not going to tick use original. We want to use the AI background removed version. And we're going to set that to be exactly the same size as uh, the bottom layer. Okay, so we'll okay that. Now one other trick is to just go back and click on our graphical element and right click on it. And just make sure that we do not have this option here ch uh, checked, which is display logos over overlay. So if I tick that, then what's going to happen, it's going to force that graphical element to come to the very top. But we don't want that. We want it to basically appear uh, in between the background and the foreground image. So I've got that done okay. We'll save all that. And I just want to check one more thing. If we go into advanced settings, um, output settings, post-process settings, uh, photo settings. Uh, we also want to enable this option here that says save copy of original photos and originals fold up as well. So I've got that one done. All right, let's go ahead and take a picture and see what happens. Okay, so it's gonna send it up to remove.bg. And so that'll just take uh, a few moments to do that, then it's going to come back 
and we'll see the final print layout and there we go so we've got the original background here which is concrete wall we've inserted that get real element behind me and then i've put myself back on top of that so that's how you achieve the effect it's actually really simple um, but really really effective as well now as i said you can do this in the ipad app without uh, having to use remove.bg just by using the um, the built-in background removal which works really well uh, any questions jump into the comments and let me know